The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Tonight, would you know what to say if your telephone should ring like this? Yes? This is the Radio Checking Bureau. Is your radio turned on? Why, yes, it is. What program are you listening to, please? It's, uh, this is your FBI, just starting. Do you know who sponsors that program? Sure I do. It's the Equitable Life Assurance Society. I listened to this equitable program last week. Heard about the Equitable Society's fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. My Equitable Society representative bought me a copy. So naturally, I know that This Is Your FBI is sponsored by the Equitable Society. In about 15 minutes, I'll be back with full information about the Equitable Society's fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Tonight's FBI file, The Sorrowful Safe Crackers. Passions in crime, just as there are in any other field. And while there are some who go against the trend, most criminals, like most legitimate citizens, follow the current fashion religiously. Some years ago, for instance, if a criminal wanted a quick reputation among his fellows, or if he wanted the biggest possible loot, he planned to rob a bank. In those days, bank robbery was almost a common crime for banks were poorly protected. But today, all that has changed. Few criminals will undertake the tremendous risk involved in robbing a bank. In one six-month period last year, for instance, there were only 21 bank robberies attempted. Thieves have turned to attacking easier targets. That is, most of them have. But despite the overwhelming odds against them, there are still some criminals who believe that they can succeed where so many others have failed, who believe that they are smarter than the law. Tonight's file opens in a small furnished room located in the downtown district of a large western city. Harry Wheeler, a lean, hungry-looking young man, is reading a book when there is a knock at the door. It's open. Hi, Harry. Oh, Frank. Hey, it's getting cold out. You got a drink handy? Yeah. Here's a bottle. Help yourself. Thanks. Hey, what are you doing, Reedy? Yeah. What are you wasting your time with that for? I ain't wasting my time. This is very special reading. Uh, right, hit me with it. Well, I, I don't know... Quite now, how to tell you this, Cranky, but uh, well, for the last couple of months, I, I ain't been getting no fun out of my job. Hey, what do you want with fun? You get money, don't you? Oh, sure. But in the beginning, every time I cracked the safe, I, I got a big jolt. Now it's nothing. Hey, that don't make sense. Maybe it don't to you, Frankie, but it does to me. That's what made me go to a psychiatrist. A what? Well, them doctors that make you talk. You mean... Like that guy in the picture with Ingrid Bergman? Yeah, yeah, that's right. What do you need with, uh, with one of those guys? You going crazy? Oh, of course not. I went to him because I needed to get straightened out. I did. That's why I'm not doing any more jobs. <laughs> what about tomorrow? You and Rip have to get another guy. Now, look, Harry, we got My to... mind's made up. But what about tomorrow? The doc says I should never been a thief in the first place. What does he want you to do, get a job in a grocery store? No, he, he thinks I ought to get away from the city. So I'm going to. You're going to what? I'm going to take his advice and get me chicken farm. Now, look, Harry, the job is all set for tomorrow. Where is Rip going to get another guy that quick? 
The job has got to be done on a holiday when the bank is closed. You know that? Frankie, I made up my mind. No more jobs. Fix me another drink, will you? Here's my glass. Yes. What is it? You know what I saw downtown today? What? The most beautiful gabbard in suit with a long skirt and those narrow shoulders. You'd love it on me. All right. You just got a new dress and two new hats. Yeah, but this suit's a bargain. How much? Three hundred. Wait till after the job tomorrow. Then will you get it for me? I don't know yet. Answer that, will you? Sure. Just a minute. Hiya, Nora. Hello, Frank. Come on in. Rip, we got trouble. What kind of trouble? Harriet's pulling out of the job. What? When did that happen? Just now. I just left him. What's the matter with him? He want a bigger cut? Nah, he went to some doctor, and the guy told him he shouldn't do no more jobs. What kind of a doctor is that? I don't know. He told me, but I don't remember. I better go talk to him. Uh, talk and do no good, Rip. He says he's finished. All right, don't get excited. Don't we have to do the job tomorrow? We'll do it tomorrow. And we'll do it with Harry. I'm you, Rip. Talk will do no good with him. His mind is... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Lenora. Yeah? You want to get that gabardine suit? Oh, honey. Not so fast. First, you got a job to do. What kind of a job? Harry Wheeler's always been a little strong for you, isn't he? I think Harry likes you. Don't con me, honey. This is important. So he has a yen for me. It's not my fault. I'm not blaming you. I just want you to throw some charm at him. I know she said. Do what? What are you two talking about? Nora, Harry wants to pull out of the job tomorrow. Huh? You get him to go along with us, and you got your soup. Honey, you just made a deal. <laughs> Two days later, in the local FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor is seated at his desk when Agent Don Brooks approaches. Hello, Don. Hello, Jim. Oh, when did you come back to work? I checked in this morning. Huh? How do you feel? Oh, I'll be all right. I was three weeks in the hospital. Straighten me out fine. Hey, you look great. What are you working on? Well, the boss asked me to work with you on that bank job that was pulled yesterday. <laughs> I'm glad he did. It's a tough one. Huh? What's the story? Well, the robbers, whoever they were, rented the store next to the bank a month ago. And they dug a tunnel from the store onto the bank and into the bank's basement. Well, how come they didn't set off the alarm? The trap wires don't run underneath the vault, and I guess they knew it. You think they might have had some inside help? No, I kind of doubt that, Don. After all, if they'd had inside help, they probably wouldn't have had to rent the store and dig the tunnel. Yeah, that's true. How much did they get? About $55,000. All of it in cash? Yes, they didn't touch any of the bonds that were in the vault. And once they got inside, of course, they turned off the alarm. That's right. Then they had an expert who blew that safe. I was down there this morning, and whoever did that job really knew what he was doing. Mm. Now, what time was the job done? During the day, according to the clock on the vault, it was blown at 11.14. How come there wasn't anybody in the bank at that time in the morning? That's closed, remember? The mayor declared a holiday yesterday because it was the city's 100th birthday. Oh, yeah, I remember. Whoever planned this job planned it to happen just as the parade was passing the bank. I spoke to some people who were standing in front of the bank. They didn't hear a thing. Well, how did they get away? Well, imagine they came back through the tunnel and out of the store. After that, they could melt into the crowd, isn't it? Mm. Any fingerprints on the vault? Not only no fingerprints, but not a single clue anyway. Who rented the store? The man who gave his name is William Adams. He paid cash for the first two months' rent. I guess William Adams is not available. Huh? Correct. He gave the landlord a fake address, so it probably isn't his right name either. Any description on it? No, no. The renting agent couldn't remember much about him. Well, you were right when you said this was a tough one, Jim. What do you think we ought to do for a start? Well, Don, I think the best thing to do is get out the file of known bank robbers and take their pictures out of that running agent. If he recognizes any of them as Adams, we start to look for him. And if he doesn't? Well, if he doesn't, we'll try somewhere else. But for now, let's get those pictures and go to work. Okay, okay. Hold it a minute. Frankie, come on in. Hey, the, uh, the job went okay, huh? Yeah, of course. I told you there wouldn't be trouble. Waste the dough. I rented a safe deposit box. Put it in there this morning. The 
the backyard. Save it there. When we get ready to blow, we take it out. Hmm? When do you think you want to be moving? Oh, I don't know. A week, ten days, then we go back east, do another job, it's all cased out. Yeah? What kind of a job? Same thing. A job. Oh. Hey, who do we get to fill in for Harry? We don't need anybody. He'll be there. But he told me he was going to take the move from this job and pay for that chicken farm. How can he pay for the farm if he ain't got the dough? Well, his hand will be more than the farm. Of course. I'm not giving him a dime. Oh, now, Rip, what'll that prove? Then he'll only get sore and never do another job. Yes, he will. He'll be back. What's going to make him? Nora. Oh. After we went to the bank this morning, I sent her down to see Harry. He's going to throw some uh, charm at him. And make him stay with us? That's the idea. Then with Harry, all we got to do is four or five more jobs like this. We can all quit with plenty of money in the bank. Yes, Jim. While you were out, we got a break. Here, take a look at this picture. Well? The blow-up of a section of yesterday's parade. The newspaper photographer who took it just brought it in. Take a look at that background. See the bank? Mm-hmm. And the store next to the bank? Hey, that three men coming out of that store. That's right. Here, take a look at this, through this glass here, at those funnels they're carrying. Yeah, it must be the money. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, only one face shows up in that picture. He's been identified, though, as a thief named Joe Stewart. Well, what are these other pictures? Oh, well, those are a gallery of everyone who was ever arrested with Stuart. Mm, they ought to come in handy. Mm-hmm. Say, uh, did you notice the suit on the one who's holding the door open for the other two? Well, the one whose back is turned to the camera? Yeah. That's a pretty loud stripe to show up so clearly in a picture taken at that distance. Yeah. Who took the picture, Jim? One of the regular photographers in the morning dispatch. He just went up to the second floor of a building to get a better angle on the parade. Has it appeared in the paper? Mm-hmm. Oh, too bad. Oh, you mean because it'll warn the bandits that we know who they are? Uh-huh. They'll really go under. Yes, but by the same token, we also have a whole city full of helpers now. If anybody sees this man any place, they'll call the police. Uh-huh, that's true. And if they stayed in town thinking they had done a perfect job, they'll have a tough time getting transportation out. Mm-hmm. Every bus line, railroad station, and airline ticket counter has been alerted. Good. Well, what do you think we ought to do now, Jim? First thing to do is find Joe Stewart. Let's take another look for his record and see if we can get a lead. <laughs> Take it easy. Take it easy! Oh, Rip. What's the matter with you? I'm glad you're still here. Why? Don't you know what happened? What are you talking about? You ain't seen the paper yet. No, they got a story about the job? A story, nothing. They got your picture. What? Yeah. Let me see that paper. Yeah. That's the three of them. Yeah. But your face is the only one that shows. You're the one who takes the rap. How do you like that? Yeah. What do we do now? We can't blow town. They'll be looking for me on the rocks. Well, we can't stay here, Rip. One of these bellboys or somebody will turn you in for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. You take it, Frankie. Okay. Hello? Hello, Frankie. This is Nora. Oh. It's Nora, Joe. Let me talk to her. Yeah. Nora? Yeah? You still with Harry? Uh-huh. You better get back here right away. I can't, Joe. Why not? That's all off now. But you asked me to talk him out of buying that chicken farm. I know I did. Well, I did what you asked me to do. He's not going to buy the farm. I don't care about the farm now. Get up here as fast as you can. We've got to make a quick move. You mean because your picture was in the paper? Have you seen it, huh? Yeah. But then get back here. We've got to go under. Joe. What? You'll have to go by yourself. What do you mean? Well, instead of buying the chicken farm, Harry's going to Florida. And I just promised him that I'm going with him. Goodbye. Hello? 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 What's the matter, Rip? Nora and Harry. They're double-crossing us, Frankie. They're going to go to Florida together. Uh, what do you lose? Just another stupid dame. Just another stupid dame, huh? That stupid dame happens to have the other key to my safe deposit box. What? And all our dough is in that box. <laughs> Turn in just a moment to tonight's file which shows how your FBI promotes security for the nation. Now let's bring this question of security closer to home. 
A year ago on this program, the Equitable Life Assurance Society offered a special fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. The response was overwhelming. Thousands of charts were distributed by equitable representatives, and the supply was quickly exhausted. So this year, the Equitable Society has prepared a new and enlarged edition of the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. It's ready now. Just what does this chart do that makes it so popular, Mr. Keating? Well, Tom, it was designed to open your eyes to what your family's financial needs would be if you should die. Fill in this fact-finding chart, and you'll know within a dollar or two how much money would be required to keep your wife and children well-fed, well-housed, and well-clothed. Come to think of it, that is something I ought to know. Tom, with this Equitable Society chart, you'll have the answer in five minutes flat. Look, you're guided every step of the way by easy-to-understand pictures which illustrate the rock-bottom expenses your family will have to meet. And when you've finished, you'll have a clear, accurate, and complete picture of just what income your family would need during the critical years. Hold on a bit, Mr. Keating. Just what are these critical years? The years before your youngest child finishes high school. Years during which the home must have a minimum income to keep it together. You sold me, Mr. Keating. Where do I buy one of these fact-finding charts? You can't buy them, Tom. They're free. The Equitable Society representative in your community will be glad to bring you a copy. Sit down with him, you and your wife together. There's no obligation, and get a true picture of where you stand. Phone him tomorrow to bring you an equitable fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Or send a postcard care of this ABC station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Now back to the FBI file, The Sorrowful Safe Cracker. Tonight's case from the files of your FBI graphically proves one important point about the alleged loyalties of one criminal for another. It proves that these loyalties are entirely legendary. The criminal who pursues his livelihood outside the common decencies does not have any loyalty nor anything else that is not for sale. He may hire his talent, his mind, or his muscles, but only for the money, never for anything else. By the very nature of his chosen career, sentimentality to the point of loyalty would be a liability. Because while it is true that a criminal may plan his every action... There is no way of his foretelling one important thing, and that is, who is going to double-cross him next? The only more important element in his plans is, who can I double-cross next myself? Tonight's file continues in the hotel apartment of Joe Stewart. He's seated in an upholstered easy chair, running his fingers nervously through his hair. How could she do this? Spent every dime I had on her. I know. Why would she want to leave a guy like me for a mooks like Harry? Yeah, the dirty crooks have probably emptied that safety deposit box by now. Well, even if they have, they're not going to swing with my dough. They, uh, they ripped one. How come you, uh, you give Nora one of the keys to the box? In case I get into a jam and I couldn't go get the dough myself. I never figured she'd double-cross me. Still got to get out of here. How can we move without dough? You carrying anything? Yeah, about a yard. I got 200. Uh, hey, Rip, I know where we can go. Where? Out to Harry's chicken farm. You know where it is? Yeah. Okay, let's pack and blow out the back way. Clerk at this hotel recognized Stewart's picture and called the office. That's why I left that note for you. Uh huh. Is Stewart living here? He was, but by the time the clerk called, Stewart had already sneaked out of his room. We didn't miss him by much, though. I found a cigar butt in one of the ashtrays. It was still warm. And he leaves it all on where he might have gone? Oh, man. you gave me this list. Oh, what is it? The list of the phone calls Stewart made for the past two weeks. Well, that might give us a lead. Mm-hmm. Uh, was there anything at all left in Stewart's apartment? No, he cleaned it out pretty well. The only thing in the place were these two library books. Oh, what are they? How to raise chickens, and this other one is those golden eggs. What was Stuart doing with books like that? 
I don't know, but it kind of ties into something I picked up at the switchboard. Oh? What was that? Operator told me she cut into Stewart's last phone call by mistake and heard some woman mention a chicken farm. Was that all she heard? Yeah. You know, maybe Stewart is using that farm as a hideout. Mm, could be. Were the library books taken out in his name? I don't know. There's no card in either one of them. Hmm. I don't suppose we can check with anyone from the library at this hour. No, I tried from the phone up in Stewart's room. There won't be anyone there until 9 in the morning. And by that time, Stewart can be wherever he's headed for. Well, John, the only thing we can do now is go back to the office and start checking these phone numbers. If they don't give us anything, we'll check with the library first thing in the morning. Frankie. Frankie, get up! Oh. Come on, get up. You're all dressed, huh? I haven't been to bed yet. Why not? Those chickens, they drive you daffy. I kind of like them. Are you kidding? Look, I've been thinking how we can get our dough. In the safe deposit box? Yeah. yeah. I remember that when Nora called me yesterday afternoon, I looked at my watches. It was exactly 4.50. Well? Banks close at 3 o'clock. That means they couldn't have gotten the dough yesterday. Hey, that's right. Nora will go to the bank as soon as it opens this morning. What did you say? I said Nora will go to the bank as soon as it opens this morning. Oh. Now I want you to get dressed and meet her. Huh? Will you get dressed and get out of here? Twelve minutes. Uh, uh, we got plenty of time. Then. Oh, sure. It won't take us well, ten minutes to get the money once we get to the bank. We'll have this cab wait for it. Happy? Gosh, yes. Will you? Will you miss that doctor? I should say not. <laughs> You're just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> oh, Harry, that's sweet. Oh. <laughs> uh, do we go much farther? No, the bank's right ahead. Well, it ought to be open by this time. Sure. That's the building driver on the right-hand side. Come on in with me, honey. Okay. Yeah, let me help you out. Oh, thank you. Hello, Nora. Frankie. Hey, what are you doing here? Joe sent me. I'll wait for you. Where is Joe? You'll find out. Let's go in and get that dough first. Eh, uh, don't rumble. This gun in my pocket might go off. <laughs> Yeah, I just got back here myself. Who's this Harry Wheeler who lives here, Jim? I don't know, but he's the one who took those books out of the library. Oh, I see. I came over here right from the library, but Wheeler was gone. Landlady said she didn't know when he was coming back. Oh, that's why you wanted this search warrant. That's right. Let's go in and take a look around his room. Okay. Go ahead, Don. Wheeler's room is on the ground floor. It's the first door down there on your right. This one, Jim? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it, number three. Can you get the key? Yeah, right here. Good. Right. Well, not much to search in here. It doesn't look that way. Jim, how does this Harry Wheeler fit in anyway? I don't know, Don. This is the only lead we've got right now. I see. Hey, Jim. Uh, I think I found something. What is it? Uh, it's a lease on a poultry farm. Well, looks like we came to the right place. Well, this still doesn't hook Wheeler into the bank job, though. All it proves is that there's some connection between Wheeler and Stewart. Don, come here. Huh? What is it, Jim? Look in this closet. I think this is all the proof we need. Who's that? It's me, Joe. I got company with me. Did you nail him? Yeah, I got him all right. Here's the dough. Joe, Joe, honey. Shut up. Frankie, what'd you bring him back here for? What else could I do? Knock him off in the bank? He brought us here against our will. Joe and me wanted to go away. That's not so. Huh? 
I didn't want to go away with you at all. Laura. You got me into this, Joe. You made me force my attentions on him. I did it all for you. Joe, she's breaking my heart. You stay out of this. Joe, honey, I was simply doing like you asked me to do. Frankie, let's but get out of here. Joe. Come on. Frankie, right. There we are, Shorty. Hey, what? what? Who is that? Don. See if any of them are loaded. Right. Oh, Cops, huh? You... Special agents of the FBI. Frankie, you let him tell you here. We didn't have to. We found the lease to this place in Wheeler's room. We also found the suit that he wore when you three did the bank job. That suit with the loud stripes? That's right. The next suit for all of you will have stripes, too. Now, come on, let's get back to town. <laughs> Stewart was sentenced to 25 years. His confederate, Frankie, 20 years. Harry and the girl, 15 years each on charges of bank robbery. And thus, because of careful investigation and the determination to follow every clue to its logical conclusion, your FBI was able to check the careers of four criminals and also was able to return the stolen money Stolen money that formed part of an aggregate total of more than $36 million, which was returned to you, the citizens of America, after it had been stolen. That, too, is part of the protection which you receive from your local law enforcement agencies and from your FBI. moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. Now, for a moment, let's get back to the Equitable Society's fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. I've been looking over that chart, Mr. Keating. The way I figure it, it's going to take a load off my mind. From now on, I'm going to stop taking chances with my family's future. And as a first step, I'm going to get one of these charts for myself. Well, Tom, the man who'll see that you get one of these fact-finding charts is your Equitable Society representative. No charge or obligation, of course. Make a note to phone your Equitable Society representative soon. Or send a postcard, care of this ABC station, to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The dramatic story of a cunning killer's attempt to outwit the law. Its subject, extortion. Its title, The Unwilling Hostess. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The unwilling hostess on This is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.